Welcome back, everyone. A few months ago, I posted a video about how effectively Islamic terrorism exposes Westerners bewitched by fashionable idiotic narratives. Unfortunately, that video has aged well, and Western idiocy has been on display more than even a pessimist like myself could ever anticipate. The Western useful idiot's support for Islamic terrorism and the overall goal of Islamists to establish an Islamic state and kill every Jew on earth is overwhelming. Now, many of the most vocal and attention-seeking Hamas activists are of university age and appear ready to join the Al-Qassam brigades and the fight to free Palestine. However, after watching these activists over the last several weeks, I'm not so sure many of them are exactly Hamas material. For example, there was this tragic incident requiring a 911 call about an activist who was not very well prepared for her resistance activities. There's a, currently a female student who is being denied the right to change her tampon uh, that has been in for multiple hours, which leads to an increased risk of toxic shock syndrome. So while you're saying, right, so then you should understand, okay, what you are not hearing, what you are not hearing is that if she stands up to use the restroom to change her tampon, they are threatening arrest. So it is not an option for her. I am requesting assistance, medical urgent assistance. Okay, listen, what I'm telling you. Okay, so you're telling me your friend in Kirkland needs an ambulance. She needs. Is that what you're telling me? Hold on, hold on. She leaves the building, and then what happens? If we, if we leave the building, right? Let's take her back to her room and get food. And that's all I can tell you right now, right? Get food, I get need drink. to know what is going to happen when she leaves the building. But hey, give her some tampons and she's ready to freak Gaza. She could start her own hashtags. Tampons for terrorism. Playtext for Palestine. Free Gaza. Period. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. The next useful idiot comes to us from the esteemed Emory University. If you get tired at your protest, no problem. An officer can carry you. Watch closely as this brat throws himself carefully down to the ground and screams like a two-year-old in the throes of a tantrum. Let's hear that again. We know that leaders of Islamic terrorist organizations watch recent events in the West with glee. However, I'm sure there's also some cringing that's going on as well. It's difficult even for me to add commentary to our next scene. Bike helmets, hard hats, goggles, a construction cone, yes, a construction cone, and plastic trash can pieces are the weapons of choice for these Portland State University geniuses. The trash can pieces, I'm sure, are unintentionally appropriate for their garbage ideology. Apparently the goal was to make law enforcement laugh so hard they couldn't arrest them. Let's see if it works. And they're off. Look at all that speed and agility. Here's one about to break through. Oh no, never mind. Who would have thought such a brilliant plan could have failed? Notice how this officer just tosses the shield aside as if it's plastic with maybe a 2 by 4 for reinforcement? Unless these students step it up a bit, they'll never impress Hamas. But on the domestic front, they do have the sympathy and support of many of the professors who have so effectively brainwashed them. This is especially true when they switch from aggressive trash can wielding thugs to victims. Poor little hungry victims. And so when some Princeton students went on a hunger strike, okay, so it wasn't a real hunger strike, it was more like a relay race when you get tired, or in this case hungry, you just pass the hunger strike baton to someone else. So basically you stop the hunger strike when you get hungry. So when some Princeton students went on a hunger strike, some of the faculty joined in for a 24-hour solidarity hunger strike, which basically amounts to intermittent fasting, which is actually supposed to be good for you. Oh, the sacrifice. Oh, the solidarity. But the real victims are at UCLA, an encampment so oppressed and victimized that the helpless little people voluntarily confined to the encampment can only rely on others, not themselves, for food and water. They can only rely on the oppressive Western systems they hate so much for sustenance. Forget about the homeless and needy in the community. It's these genocide-supporting, ignorant, privileged brats who need volunteers to bring them food. They themselves are the victims. You see how backwards all of this stuff is? That's Western idiocy. And in keeping with this backwards stupidity, it's well known that throughout human history, when country A attacked country B, it was country B's responsibility to protect and provide for the well-being of country A during retaliation. Not really, except in this case. Israel, not Hamas, the duly elected leadership, is responsible for the people of Gaza, even as Hamas uses them as human shields, exploits them for political purposes, and enjoys overwhelming support 
in the process. So Israel does what is necessary in this age of absurdity, shipping in hundreds of food trucks per week with calorie counts per person that exceed the WHO's standards. Israeli researchers found that on average, between January and April, 124 trucks carrying food and humanitarian aid enter Gaza per day. That's 3,211 calories worth of nutrition per Gazan per day. The WHO standard for men is 2,900 per day and women 2200. But that's not enough, not when the least popular U.S. president in like 70 years appears to be on an uphill battle to get reelected and panders to his Jew-hating fringes for votes. There's more to be done. Let me close with this. After I signed the PAC Act into law. Sorry, wrong clip. Tonight, I'm directing the U.S. military to lead an emergency mission to establish a temporary pier in the Mediterranean on the coast of Gaza that can receive large shipments carrying food, water, medicine, and temporary shelters. Hmm, a pier into Hamas-controlled territory, the same region where Hamas has been commandeering food trucks from Israel and leaving the population to starve. wonder how this is going to work out. Until recently, none of the aid that has been unloaded from the temporary pier the U.S. constructed off the coast of Gaza has been delivered to the broader Palestinian population. The U.S. is working with Israel and the United Nations, no mention of working with the duly elected Hamas leadership, wonder why, to establish alternative routes for the safe delivery of the 569 tons of aid transported to Gaza since last week. But I'm sure this will all get better and the pier will be turned into a big political success in a critical election year. Potential issues with this pier have been telegraphed for some time since multiple media outlets reported while the pier was under construction that Islamic terrorists were firing mortars at it. You cannot make this stuff up. More starvation in Gaza means more bad press, not for Gaza's elected leaders, but for Israel. And that helps Hamas. Whether it's withholding intelligence on Hamas leaders, encouraging Israel to leave Hamas intact, providing American taxpayer-funded meals to Hamas, or any number of other ways the Biden administration has enabled terrorism, they do have this in common with the trash can-wielding university activists and their professors. They're sobering examples of how Islamic terrorism brings out the idiocy in Western progressives. So what's going on here? Why does Islamic terrorism command the attention of Western idiots so uniquely? Why don't we see university students and faculty adequately equipped with food and tampons, of course, gearing up with plastic trash can shields and protest against, I don't know, North Korea, China, Nigeria, or a host of Muslim nations where women, for example, have little to no rights? Or what about the hostages still in the terror tunnels? You know, the ones who had their posters torn down in cities across the U.S. Why is it that Islamic terrorists cross a border, murder, rape, and kidnap, and then Western idiots dressed like terrorists, waving flags of terrorists, shout terrorist slogans in solidarity? This pathetic, completely incoherent activism exposes the pathetic, completely incoherent worldview of so many Western idiots, a worldview that I've explained and critiqued in other videos. But seeing this ideology in action, in real time, across the country, from privileged students to professors to the president, makes its repugnance even more visceral. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe people will get woke to the Islamist agenda. Lastly, Western idiots should remember two things. First, the terrorists you cheer for are your enemies. You are only useful idiots. Second, and very importantly, revolutions tend to devour their own. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.